Despite being late to almost every art trend in the Western world, the United States managed to carve out its niche in art music through jazz. Where traditional classical music flourished over the Atlantic Ocean, the United States was making developments in a genre of music that would have an equal amount of importance on the musical landscape. Today we are going to talk a little bit about America's classical music, its formation, and the key details that came together th to make jazz jazz. We'll take a look at some of the historical elements, the rhythmic commonalities, and how blues and Dixieland music played a part in the formation of the genre. To begin, let's take a trip to New Orleans and look at its early history. Jazz came as a combination of many types of music in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. New Orleans was the home of this movement, as many African Americans, French, Irish, German, Spanish, and Italian people each had their own culture with them and were living in this area. With many of these cultures having long musical traditions, their musical styles intertwined with each other in addition to the developing mu American styles. There is no single inventor of jazz. Jazz came as a result of the culture meshing in the New Orleans area. With that noted, many people look towards trumpet player Buddy Bolden as one of the godfathers of jazz, as his energetic trumpet playing became legendary and garnered a cult following in and around New Orleans. His legend is only compounded by the fact that there are no known recordings of Bolden, and only this picture exists of him. He was active right at the turn of the century, but led a short career due to health issues and mental illnesses. The earliest jazz history, dating around before the 1910s, are only based on first-hand oral accounts, and while there are many of these, in most cases, the facts and the exact knowledge are quite uncertain. That being said, it is clear that jazz evolved as a result of African American music traditions being infused with classical music and other regional music cultures of New Orleans. A big part of the sudden involvement of African music styles comes as a result of many African Americans entering the entertainment industry following the abolition of slavery. African Americans would be one of the main driving groups of jazz for decades and their rhythm is eternally present in jazz. With some of the history out of the way, let's look at some of the rhythmic commonalities of jazz. Western African heritage included a strong musical tradition, a tradition that existed for generations within the United States. At the root of this was syncopation. Syncopation relies primarily on rhythmic variation, or it's most commonly seen as playing on the offbeats. The most common of these traditional rhythms include the tracilo. This and other simple African rhythms would set the syncopated groundwork in jazz, and in Cuba, similar developments were happening. Because of the connections between Havana, Cuba, and New Orleans for trade, the musical culture that developed there spread into the pre-jazz culture. In Cuba, the habanero was seeing international fame as well as the usage of the clave. Early jazz musicians made movements to integrate these rhythms into their playing. Here are some examples of their integration. Take a look at Scott Joplin's The Entertainer, for example. The stressed beats of it are syncopated and lined up, line up with a 3-2 son clave pattern. To understand the habanera's usage in jazz, look at Jelly Roll Morton's Spanish Tinge. The underlying rhythm matches the habanera, and it's almost swinging. Both of these rhythms are important to the transition of the straightness of classical music to the swinging of jazz, but it still would be a little bit longer before the swing was mastered and fully adopted. The piano playing by Scott Joplin is known as ragtime, and it used its syncopation to create a ragged feeling, hence the name. 
Ragtime was a popular form of music in the area, and its breakaway from the straightness of music at the time helped guide, helped guide its transition to jazz. Taking a look back at Buddy Bolden's group, the band was credited for their own developments in syncopation. The big four drum pattern slightly deviated from a standard on the beat march, and many groups would go on to adopt this in the region. In just about a decade, the ideas put out by these musicians became widespread in the early jazz of New Orleans. The next ingredient was also being added, and once again, we look to African roots for the blues. At the same time, another traditionally African music style was pushing its influence into music. The blues was the name given to the adaptation of work songs, spirituals, and chants that African American communities in the Deep South sung. The style was then popularized by W.C. Handy, a trumpet player who would be known for publishing some of the first blues music, notably Memphis Blues and St. Louis Blues. By combining Afro-Cuban rhythms with the blues, he codified jazz by publishing the first sheet music to it. St. Louis Blues shows this combination of musical elements taking place. While the verse is the now familiar 12-bar blues, the bridge of it uses the same Spanish tinge as coined by Jelly Roll Morton as the main background and leading part in the bridge which, in, the ca in this case, W.C. Handy calls the tango section. Take a listen at these two parts, beginning with the tango section. And now, the bridge blues section. You see, W.C. Handy wrote the St. Louis Blues in a very traditional music fashion, and integrates these parts like a classical musician. That's because, despite being African American, he was a classically trained trumpet player and was largely di disconnected from the pre-jazz traditions. While Scott Joplin, W.C. Handy, and other musicians were making their own breakthroughs in pre-jazz, Dixieland would help cement this style. Dixieland music took everything that had developed in the New Orleans region and combined it. New Orleans offered itself as a hub for all of these styles to come together, and musicians, self-taught or formally trained, could play together. Once again, musicians like Buddy Bolden, Jelly Roll Morton, and the original Dixieland jazz band were at the forefront of this movement. They would take an assortment of instruments, be it violins, drums, clarinets, trumpets, you name it, and play together. In Dixieland, usually the trumpet would play a lead melody, while all of the other instruments would improvise under it. The usage of improvisation, while not a new invention of music, became a basic element to Dixieland and eventually jazz music. Dixieland would be the popular music of the Deep South for decades and even go international with African Americans serving in the US military during World War I. Dixieland would pave the way for the swing era with its feel, encouraging people to dance to the energetic music. A notable figure to come out of New Orleans at this time would be the trumpet player Louis Armstrong, who would take his Dixieland roots to become one of the most celebrated figures in jazz. That. However, is a story for another day. Dixieland music paved the way for jazz to thrive, and the next decades proved it. So in quick review, today we talked a little bit about the early history of jazz, where it comes from culturally, how syncopation involved, and more so, the development of blues in Dixieland, and how it supported the earliest development of jazz. Jazz's history is oftentimes quite skewed and inexact, but where it developed, 
and the elements that made jazz are still apparent when looking at its earliest roots. From its humble roots in New Orleans to becoming the music of America, jazz moved quickly. Jazz would be very popular for many, many decades to come. Then from that, it evolved into the well-respected art form for many other decades, even ranging up to today.